Welcome to Auntie K's, your favorite radical queer indigenous auntie bringing you tarot every day. Hello everybody and welcome to Auntie K's. I am here with a tag today. My tag is to Sylvain's Deadly Sins and it is seven decks for deadly sins because that sounded right up my alley. Um, I am not doing Papa Squirrel's tag and no shade to Papa Squirrel and the rest of y'all. But, you know, uh, I, I was colonized by Christians. I don't celebrate Christian holidays. Even when non-Christians celebrate Christmas, Christian holidays, I'm not really down. Um, and I'm re-recording this because I did this thing that those of us who live in your Western society, we often, when we don't, celebrate christian religions feel like we have to explain to you why we as somebody not part of that religion want to opt out of celebrating that religion and i was like i'm gonna clean up this discussion because we also need to have it for all those of you who are like yeah ha, huh, i don't want to do this christian thing let me explain to you why I don't want to do it. And we do. We explain this all the time, including to people not of that religion, expecting us to celebrate that religion. Okay, so, um, bring me your winter and solstice tags, folks. Okay, so we are going to do Sylvain's Seven Decks for Deadly Sin. Uh, do watch Sylvain's. It's linked in the description box. And um, so I listen, you'll get to hear what each of the seven deadly sins are. They're listed in Sylvain's description box. But Sylvain also talks about like, this is what it is to me. And there's this encouragement that... Uh, we don't have to choose what deck represents each of the sins in the exact same way Sylvain did. We can do it in our own ways. And I'm down for that. Um, I'm down for that. So, um, but I'm going to, in some cases, really keep to the same, to the same vein. Pride. So, um, you know what? There is healthy pride and there is unhealthy pride. And so often we think about or are concerned about representations of displaying an unhealthy pride. But we also need to be a little bit concerned about making sure we show representations and experience and enjoy representations of a healthy pride. Um, so there we go. In, you know, queer folks, like, we have healthy pride. We also have some really unhealthy pride displays. Um, <laughs> you know, ones that need to do a lot of... Anyway, so pride in a healthy sense. You know, the deck I created, the Lambac Tarot and Oracle of Colonization, I have a really healthy sense of pride that, like, I pulled this deck off that... It represents my community and family and friends, sometimes, like, really literally. And, you know, it's able, it, totally able to be like, this deck does not need to be gendered. Um, we have multiple genders. Uh, we have a way of speaking that in our language, we don't have a pronoun that translates as he and a pronoun that translates as she. That doesn't exist in my language. There's a lot of indigenous languages where gendered pronouns don't exist. Um, so I only use them if the person I represented uses a gendered pronoun when speaking English. And, you know, I thought a lot about, like, how does Rider Waite Smith translate into my life and experience both you know in its representation of the civilization colonizing and oppressing my land and people um and in our understandings of their words 
and so that they are healthy for us. So, yeah, some of these cards are really different, but the story is generally the same, you know? So, um, I have a healthy sense of pride about that. Um, I don't know if I really have, like, some weird sense of pride about a particular deck or in the way Sylvain described it, and that's cool. Um, that's my sense of pride in a deck. Uh, greed. So, this was a deck where um, Sylvain talked about having a deck that, like, you keep just for yourself and you don't show to anybody. I have such a deck <laughs> um, because it's a prototype deck. Um, and, um, you know, it's not out there yet. And um, so I had really wanted it on its first Kickstarter, which didn't succeed. And I was told, shh. But you can't show anybody um, because then someone might know that I gave this to you. Um, but it had a successful Kickstarter, which I ordered so that I can share this deck with everybody because I don't want to have a deck that I can't show to anybody. It's really a thing that's driving me up the wall. And I'm like, man. I don't like not being able to show you a deck. And so I still can't show you the deck. Uh, I have it out here in front of me. It's like really a nice, beautiful deck. Um, damn. Okay. <laughs> so the next one is Wrath. Um, a deck uh, that, you know, you have a love-hate relationship with. Okay, I think we all know uh, lights. I'm using light seers. It's in my collection because I like it. And I'm annoyed as fuck that I like this. <sighs> it's like in the... Okay. It's like in the late 80s when, you know, you were this, like, scruffy punk skater kid uh, who listened to, like, this great, awesome garage music and then, like, some magazine journalist labels you as grunge. And suddenly, like, you find this really cool shirt in the mall. And you're like, ah, why are they making cool shit in the mall? I don't want to like this. Um, and, and then you buy it. But then you're like, do I, am I going to, I'm not going to wear it to school. I'll wear it when I'm hiking or uh, visiting my grandma. <laughs> uh, so that's light seers to me. Like, um, it's not diverse enough. It's like 25, 30% diverse. Um, so there's actually a lot of clients I won't use this for. I'll only, yeah, because when a deck's 25, 30% diverse, and you're pulling like three to five cards, like you're likely going to have like one person of color out of five cards or, or none, maybe if you pulled three. Um, and that's my problem with it. But this deck is easy as fuck to read. Um, like, and the art's really nice and the faces are, um, Faces are really good. The bodies show emotion. Chris Ann's a really good artist who made a really good deck and clearly knows a lot about tarot. Though I don't like the Muse tarot. I don't get it. Um, but it's not diverse enough. I would love, like... If Chris Ann was like, I'm going to make 
a version of Light Sears that's actually for real diverse and actually for real represents the world I live in that is 80% people of color and 20% white people. That That's what I want. <laughs> that That's my challenge. That's what I want. So I have a love-hate relationship with uh, Light Sears. It's my wrath deck. Okay. Um, the next one up is, um, the next deck up is Envy, a deck that I got, um, because others got it. Um, I largely haven't been like, um, you know, oh, this is the deck everyone's getting. I don't know if I really had like a FOMO deck like that with uh two exceptions one was a queer black tarot and like collage just it's not my deal it's not working for me uh, so having decks I don't show everybody doesn't really do it for me so I gave it to somebody who I know is going to use it a lot um and that's making me quite happy. So, uh, the other deck, uh, I was like, I love Dream Vision Tarot. I, it was extra money. I could spend, but probably should enough. Um, Envy and Gluttony are both the same scenario. And I bought them really close together. Um, but I was like, I had just like finished my Kickstarter and, um, and the money is cleared and I'd bought the first round of everything I had to buy. And I was like, I buy myself two Kickstarters. Um, I'm going to find two Kickstarters. So everybody was like getting dream vision and the truth is, like, a lot of y'all love all up these decks that, like, I'm like, meh. <laughs> um, and that's cool. I still really enjoy your channels. Um, probably why I really like when Katie Flowers makes fun of us with our favorite decks. Um, so I got Dream Vision Tarot. And, um... I was, there was an aspect of, yay, everybody is going to have this deck. I'm going to have this deck. I'm going to love it. It's rainbow. It's colorful. It's everything I love. It's, it, um, I want fantasy that doesn't look like, um, white people. The vast majority of fantasy, fairies, elves, aliens, vampires, are white people. Um, witches, especially, especially if it's witches. Oh my God. And, um, so Dream Vision Tarot is like very otherworldly. Um, I, you know, this one of the things, oh, it's in my bag. I love about Dream Visions too is like, it's got aliens, and it's got a high level of diversity. So unusual. <laughs> so, uh, Emma Zhang is a BIPOC artist, creator, and these otherworldly beings don't just look like uh, white people. Um, and some of y'all might be looking at it and being like, I don't get it. I don't get it. But it, even as like a like skinned indigenous person, I get when I never see mine and my friends faces in something repetitively, no matter like what the skin tone. Um, so I love this deck. Uh, even if, and I wanted to explain that 
This is my Envy deck, but this is totally a successful Envy. So is my Gluttony deck. Um, okay. And for those who are like, wait, isn't Latero Archetypal your, um, isn't Latero Archetypal your Envy deck? No. Tom Benjamin told me about Latero Archetypal because it's what I was looking for. I went out and ordered it. I shared it. And I was aware of other, lots of other people also, okay, maybe not lots, like maybe a handful of really cool Tarot de Marseille folks <laughs> who, um, we can define lots however we want, um, who were then like, oh, yay, cool, I'm getting this deck too. Um, so it's not my Envy deck, um, because, um, I ordered it upon being told about it by one person so it's not technically my envy deck um my lust deck talk about like decks i can't effing show you <laughs> um i can't show this deck on youtube or um instagram or facebook it's the divine portal deck oh i think i can like blurb it out. It's a divine portal deck. I'm going to blurb out all the fun parts, but it's, you know, a pussy deck. Um, it's got young pussy. It's got old pussy. It's got middle age pussy. Uh, it's got pussy from every like continent uh, it's heavily diverse. They come in all kinds of, like, shapes. Like, every kind of pussy a person might have is in this stack. They have names on them, so let's... Okay, the Siren... This one's all a rainbow background, um, which is also happens to be hard to see in this light. The goddess. The queen. The mystic. And you're all missing half of this, the psychic. Yeah, I know. I'm ruining all the good parts. It's my last deck. It's my last deck. You know? Like, ah, oh, such a rough day. Give me... Give me some divine messages and an array of pussies. Of all ages. Yep. 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 Yes. All right. <laughs> Gluttony. Um, so the next deck I got after I got Dream Vision and I was like, I don't know how I'm going to feel about cute cartoony decks, but I just want to put my money here and spend my money here. I wanted to support Bush Kitty. Um, <laughs> so my gluttony also, you know, was wonderful in giving. I'm sorry folks. I'm not good at capitalism. Um, and I love this deck. <laughs> I'm so happy I got it. So both these decks are packed up with me to travel. Dream Vision and the Little Buddha Tarot. Um, and you know, when a BIPOC mom reached out to me and was like, I'm making a deck about Brown Boy Joy, I was like, I don't know how I feel about cute cartoony decks, but yes, 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 uh, yes. <laughs> I I want a deck that's all about that. Um, so I'm going to let my son have access to this deck, but um, it reads really well. 
It does. If it is something he is wanting to use, like, regularly, then I, you know, might get a second one. But, um, currently, he has um, an affirmations deck, um, which isn't heavily used. Um, we'll see. You know, I would like a stronger interest in these things for him, but uh, they'll come right now. He's strongly interested in Lego and video games and uh, YouTubers who don't talk about tarot, but talk about crafts and or video games. <laughs> I don't know if there's any that do both, but he likes crafting ones and video game YouTubers. Yeah. Apparently, they're much more exciting than all us tarot tubers. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Seven-year-olds, man. Seven-year-olds. So, sloth. Uh, a deck you use when you're lazy. Um, first read the description box. Uh, a deck I use when I'm lazy. But there's a few decks like that. Lightseers, Mystic Medleys. Um, but, uh, when Sylvain described, uh, that the interpretation of that as like a deck you reach for when you want the message to come out kind of easy, you want to feel like you did some great, like <laughs> inner healing work, but you know, it didn't take a whole heck of a lot. Uh, messages from your higher self. It's pretty. It's pink. It has like these pink shimmering edges that match the fronts and the backs. It is by a BIPOC creator. It is beautiful. The messages are gentle. Uh, don't be busy for the sake of being busy. Strive uh, for progress not perfection. Your worth has nothing to do with your body. No is a complete sentence. So like they're beautiful cards. They're nice, soft, gentle cards. They make like a good like card that's just going to sit up there for the day. Like they're better than an affirmation deck. You know, the They've got real shit in it. Like, take time before making big decisions. Okay. No is a complete sentence. Stop putting time and emotion into people who do not do the same for you. So, like, it's not, like, cotton candy. It's not the pink kind of fluff that, like, has zero nutritional value. It's, um... Believe in power of divine timing. Believe in the power of time timing. Let go of the past. Like, it's not, they're not hard. You're not like, they're real. But like, you're mostly not being pushed to do any major heavy work. Uh, and they feel soft. And pink and gentle. That's why I was really struggling when I was like, if I could only keep 10 decks. Um, when in doubt, read a book. They're actually really good advice cards. The truth is I'd really struggle to take only 10 decks. I have 10 decks packed right now. I'm constantly thinking how this would easily fit into, you know, I brought my tarot deck, but not my oracle deck. And I am adding messages to your higher self into this pouch. Will it fit? If you fit, you come with me. It fits. It fits. It 
bits that can go into a giant purse of wonders <laughs> that holds so many decks. Oh, this deck purse is the greatest because like, seriously, I can hold so much stuff in this purse and like, you know, in such a way that I am going to be able to find it all and not just be like, where did you go to? Like, these stones in this bag will fit into that pocket there. Put that hanky in with the extra masks. Okay. Uh-oh. I pouched that. Okay, that fell down. See, this purse will actually hold like 20, 30 ducks. No word of a lie. Um, but I have to actually be able to carry it. Um, so, and what I want out of it is for the um, decks that I'm taking just to fit along the bottom where like, you know, it's like bases. Um, so in a line across here is the 10 decks. Um, but like, yeah, I can like fit them like up two more layers. So 20 decks if I'm bringing other stuff. And if I have 20 decks, I need like, definitely need some like journals, pens, my phone, my wallet. <laughs> if it was only carrying decks, um, then 30 is what that purse would fit. You want to talk about seven deadly sins, gluttony, greed, <laughs> lust. My purse um, that allows me to take 10 decks even on a day trip. Now, I'm doing more than a day trip. I've been known to take more than 10 decks on a day trip if I thought I was going to be using them that purse will do it um but also it holds nicely 10 decks plus a whole lot of other um magical medicinal supplies and then your regular purse stuff now i don't wear makeup so i don't have to hold that stuff <laughs> um it's that pride greed <laughs> lust gluttony and be that purse. That purse, which is designed to be have decks, will travel. <laughs> um, yeah. Which is the other aspect that makes only 10 decks. 10 decks is my, like, this fits nicely on the bottom of my purse. Like, if I'm running out the door, like, there's more than 10 decks going in that bag. It's just going to be, like, tilt the shells. <laughs> Dex, go. Um, yeah. So that is my seven deadly sins. Um, this is going to be posted while I'm up in on the road. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to, um, you know, being vaccinated, having the safety of knowing like at least everybody else on the train is vaccinated and it's not at full capacity i gotta tell you that it does make this trip feel feasible it does still feel like a risk that i'm visiting folks um but you know there's been a lot of planning into me visiting and where i'm coming from into so, and a lot of communication along the way as, as, uh, you know, as I get closer to the date, which for me is tomorrow morning and for you was like, it's happened. Um, do follow me on discord as well. And, you know, you'll see me on my travels, have work, have Tara will travel, um, 
so you saw the purse have tarot will travel so i'm going to be doing some readings through the week i'm going to be doing some um book work through the week i'm going to weeks actually I'm going to be gone two and a half weeks um i'm going to do some deck work through the week um but I'm also just going to be enjoying cards with friends and learning to take some time to turn it all off. Um, I am staying for five days with a medium and I find that um, it can be spiritually really busy. <laughs> so, um, you know, They'll be on and my plan is to have on and off time. I'm both excited and like enjoy with breaks so we're not all exhausted and worn out. That's why I'm talking about this. Off on travel with self-made family. Um, choosing to spend holidays of my choice outside the pressures to do at least some things Christmas Santa da 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 um there's that pressure that like so and so's family uh and that somehow is so important and has to supersede everything including your own personal abuse or trauma or as siblings or other family members abuse or trauma that you're not going to stand up to or end because family um i want to tell you it is okay to say no i'm out i'm out it's okay to make self-made family. When you make self-made family, I'm going to be really honest. I'm going to be really honest about some of what you need when you make self-made family. You need some of your self-made family to not have access to their own non-self-made family, with the exception, perhaps, of partner and kids. Um... Because folks who have um, legally defined family that they spend holidays with and that they look after um, in times of sickness or uh, financial struggles or all those other things that not having family and turning your back on abusive family means you lose. Um, People who have legally defined family that they do those things for, they're going to do those things for them, especially if their finances don't allow both. You need to make self-made family with people who need self-made family and are also at a place where they uh, are fully stepped into self-made family. Because that's where you're going to get to spend holidays with somebody. Um, you know, have someone else buy your kids a solstice gift. Um, those are the people um, you're going to be able to reach to when you're, like, stressed, broken, at your wit's end. And um, you need the kind of help you can only ask for from family. You do indeed need self-made family who's in that same spot. I have spent many lonely years where self-made family was busy with real family. Um, and it's hard and difficult and painful. And I'm really thankful that I've been at the place um, where I get to have um, real holidays with real self-made family. Um, and provide that to my kids. 
provide my kids with cousins that will be their real family um as they as they grow up and as they grow into their adult years and and need that real family base that you don't have if if you step away from legally to find family um so those are my words of advice for folks who find the various holiday seasons a struggle. Um, and it takes time and you will find ways where um, you get to enjoy it too with, with its up and downs because everyone's having some up and downs <laughs> um, in, in their holiday stuff. So I hope everybody enjoyed that whole seven deadly sins and several other topics <laughs> that I got into. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Check out the description box for uh, this tag's original video. Um, and check the tag out on YouTube. Search it for others. I'm going to do this after I'm done doing this. And... Um, and check out the description box for all my info. See y'all later, folks.